doing the shit. Hi and welcome to another episode of Down the Shed. I'm Jason. In this video, we're going to make a candlelight effect LCD clock. Now, I did have a go at one of these before and royally screwed it up because without having gone onto the website of the seller and checked the build guide, I soldered the switch in like that. Big mistake. Having checked, and this was the only mistake, having checked the build guide, the switch needs to go in like that, but not quite. So you need to bend these pins, but I think the switch doesn't sit on the edge, but more just on the edge of the board. So I'll back in a moment. So I've turned the board around to give you a better view. So as you can see, I've now got the pins bent like so. And that sits in the holes just on the edge of the board like that. So it's got a bit of a, something to lean against. So I'll blue tack and solder that in. Well, I think we'll take the 0.8 mil solder again, clean your iron. So we'll get plenty of solder in these to hold that down. let it pour in there you want it to flow in there as best as you can Have a look. I think just for uh, argument's sake where is it there we go just for argument's sake I think I'll put a wee bit of solder on the back of these as well just help strengthen the uh, the joins there's pads on both sides of the board so you're not doing yourself any mischief you literally just reinforcing their solder joins on the other side so that's the switch on so that was my only mistake last time but basically I should have tried desoldering it but I just well, I'd already snipped the wires anyway, so. Right, so let's crack on with the rest of the kit. So we've got four 10K, two 10K and two 2K resistors here. So we'll put those in. So our resistors are on a blue background and it looks like we've got brown, black, black, red and brown for the 10Ks. The 2Ks are red, black, black, brown, brown. So we'll slot those in next to the uh, 10Ks. So that's the resistors in place. I'll just blue tack them down and get them soldered in. So we'll just get some of these soldered down and then I'll pause you. You don't want to see all the soldering. It's not really that exciting. You can always forward it, of course, but I was not taking it. I might put some flux on that. So our eight resistors and our switch are now in place. So they've been soldered in. You probably won't be able to see it. I need to move this back a bit the other way. There you go. So they didn't seem to take the solder too brilliantly, but then I think that's just the cheap Chinese components. This ain't Velleman. Right, next we're going to put on... I am going by the instructions on this one, even though it's pretty straightforward from here. Next, we're going to put on the vibration motor. Now, that's got sticky back, and it goes here. But we're going to have to shorten these leads, because we're literally just soldering to there and there. So, as you'll see, there's a square and a round, or that's actually round-ish. Square pegs are usually positive. It's not written, but it is. So we'll pop this on. Right, so I've cut the leads down. We'll tin the pads. And then we'll tin the leads if we can. They are rather short and I 
hard to get to, but I'm doing it on my mat. Stick the motor down. And then using a pair of tweezers, we want to carefully solder that in. One. Let's try bending that round the other way. This is very fiddly. This bit. It's more of the uh, trying to keep the wires tidy. Really, should have left them wrong. So there we have the vibration motor on board. So you want to leave the thermistor sticking up about half inch or so. You don't want it flat on the board, so that's about fine. And they do show it soldered to the top of the board as well. So I think just for argument's sake, I might just plop a little bit on here. So that's the thermistor in. Now we want the photoresistor. And again, this has got to be left a little proud of the board. So, oh, Missy the alt. Said the actress to the bishop. So we'll give that about that much. Again, we'll solder both sides of the board. No reason why not. No reason why we should, no reason why we shouldn't. And we'll snip the leads. Why did we just go bling over there? Right, and as you can see with the back cover fitted, we've got that almost perfect. So that's going to be the USB, that's going to be capacitors, that'll be the buzzer, and that'll be the mic, and that'll be the transistor. So there's holes for components to stick through the board. Right, next is the crystal. In fact, it only gives us two couple more parts, and that leaves us on our own, even the build guy with the rest. That switch is the only thing you really needed help with. If you put that in wrong to start with, that was it, everything's screwed. But it says we should put this in and then tie it down with a piece of wire. Not tie it down, but use a piece of wire to solder it down, which is a bit strange, but we shall see. So. So we're just, uh, actually, we can just solder from above, can't we? And pin it in place. So we'll just pin that in. When the iron wakes back up. So I've soldered the top down. We're just, I couldn't see where the legs were then. They were so short. We just bung a bit of solder in around the backs of them as well, just to finish the job properly. Nearly had a bridge then. I think a desoldering tool wouldn't have sorted out, so we'll snip that like so. So now we need to put a piece of wire across there to bridge it in. So I've got a nice piece of solid core wire that I've just stripped, and basically I shall feed that into the hole. That's just my Bluetooth speaker shutting down. So there's our holding wire, 
again they've shown it as soldered from above but I've done it above and below as you do let's just give that a bit of reflow good enough right so so far that's let's zoom out a bit oh. So, so far we've got our eight resistors, our vibration motor, photoresistor, thermistor, and crystal on. So next, what are those two holes for? Oh, that's the LED. That's the other side of the board. Uh, next we shall go with U2. No reference to the band. There's no um, chip holders on these. It's literally straight in the board miss forward don't forget your notches to go with the goal posts pin one's also got a square peg I just want to feed these in a little bit there we go Right, so I've just popped in the DS1307, which I think is a real-time clock chip, possibly. So that's here. There's no chip holder. We're straight into the board on that one. Right, Q1. There's only one transistor, so it can only be the one. That is a S9012, for those of you who need to know. Because I know some of you just have to know these things. Come on, Melty. Right, so that's the transistor on board. So all we've got left on this side of the board now is the battery pack holder. And this side we've got the mic, the buzzer, the big chip, and three capacitors, USB lead, two switches, and the LED. Right, capacitors two and three are both 104s, so there's no real mystery over what's going where there and c1 is the electrolytic so you can't really get those wrong two are the same and one isn't so that's quite obvious that's the two 104s in place just in case anyone's wondering i'm using the 0.8 mil solder not the six because this isn't really anything intricate so the long leg of the electrolytic goes in the plus or with the square pad sometimes you get like a white marking or a stripe on the board I'm just going to check something and the electrolytic is left standing up. Some of these components are getting led down so I wasn't too sure. But that's upstanding. Battery's flat soon so I might have to finish recording some other way. Some other way. There we go. So that's the electrolytic in. Next we'll go for the long chip. So this is a IAP 15W413AS. Next line is a 35I dip 16. Bottom line is 1749HRW070.XA. Again, for those of you who need to know, we we'll have to bend the legs in manually with our fingers. You get start getting a feel for that. Again, notch on the end of the chip matches the goalpost on the board so we just need to slide these in slightly 
There we go. And the fact that they weren't... Oh, it will fall. As I say, the fact they weren't spot on, a little bit tight, might hold it in place, but... Ow! Hell no. And be careful on the other side of the board when pressing a chip down. Because you might... Blodge your finger on the end of the sharp bits. So we'll do this corner to corner because we don't want too much heat on that chip. That was a weird bit of solder, that just flaked off. I'll turn my little fire off, it's gone warm. So here we have an electric or condenser microphone that does have polarity. It doesn't state it on the actual piece of equipment, but there is one pin that has three tracks going to the outer case. I can't remember which it is now. I think that's the negative. And the buzzer kindly puts the positive on there for us. So I'm going to have to Google that electric microphone out. Just to make sure. Because I saw a video on it a while ago. Bloody helpful. So let's get the buzzer in. And then we'll pause while I research to be sure on that mic. If we want to do the best we can, we don't want to just throw it on any old house. So, one moment. Right, a quick hunt on the internet, and I was right. The three tracks go from the negative. But, unusually, oh, there's a dot on the board. The plus is usually the square. I don't know why they've given us a dot. However, also... And this is going to be quite obvious when I point it out to you. So the positive is the square hole. So the negative is the round hole. But wait, there's only one way this is going to fit in the board. And fill the circle. If we put it in the wrong way, it's not going to fit. So as you can see, that's pretty much out of alignment so we put it back in the correct way with the uh, negative on the dot and the positive in the square hole she sits in neatly so apart from the fact that we've correctly identified our polarity it was idiot proof for us but at least now we know how to check so you're gonna have to switch you want to try and keep these solders quite I'll wake up. I'm going to try and keep the solder quite low on this one because that switch is going to sit over the top of it. There are a couple of uh, indentations on the bottom of the switch. Not indentations, a couple of plastic pins that will hold it up anyway. Or raise it. So that's the microphone. So it has some sort of voice wake up or audible wake up, shall we say. So all we've got left now is the LED, the two switches, the battery holder, and the USB. I hate the USBs. Let's have a look at this battery holder. So I think the... Uh... Battery's going to go in this way, from the left, or from the end, in. 
so that basically wants to be on there like that so let's flow a right so the battery's going to come in this way from the edge so really we want to flow a crap load of solder onto this pad there we go just let that take and then we'll do the other side and come back and finish that one off again don't be shy with the solder on these because remember you're going to be forcing a battery in there so the more it's got to hold on to the better So the USB connector, which is basically power, so I don't think we need all five pins, but they put all five in there. It'd be nice if they just put the ones we needed. It's not like we're transferring data or anything. So let's solder that in. My phone's nearly dead, so if I do lose power, I'll have to catch you up at the end of the video. There's not really a lot of pins sticking out of those holes. I mean, that is really flipping scarce. So I'm going to have to zoom in on my four times magnifying glass to uh, get the rest of that on. So I'll see you in a moment. Squint in through a uh, four times magnifying lens that's an inch in diameter with one eye is a bit tricky, but she's on. So that is this side of the board completely populated. I'll see if I can zoom out a bit. Okay, so the uh, the camera did die. Here's the finished product. So we've got the case on. So uh, to fit the case, you want to put the screws into the front cover. Put a nut. It's hard to work with this, especially when you plug it into your bloody laptop for power. Uh, yeah, so. Put a nut in behind the case, so as you can see, screw goes through, then a nut, then the boards, and then put the spacer before the backboards go on, and backboard and nut, so that fits it together. There's the uh, finished product. As you can see, everything's nicely on there. The LED is in there and as you can see that's been set to shine down it's in candle effect mode at the moment uh, there's the top and if you notice i've done what have i done i did the short pins on the circuit board and the long pins going through the display that's the wrong way around you want the short pins soldered into the display and the long pins going into the board I did snap the front cover here because the button wasn't fitting properly but as you can see we do have a working clock now I've had to turn the brightness down let's turn the lights on I've had to turn the brightness down quite a lot on this to get it to a display on the computer so we hold the left button down and we go into settings so if we use the left button again we get to do the time setting. So uh, press and hold the left button, one and a half seconds. Press the right button, and we go into the set of the date, alarm, LED lighting mode. That changes from off, uh, on, flashes when you press a button, fades in and out, and does this candle effect. Information arrangement, that changes the display, so the date format or where the dates displayed, what week you're in, all sorts of information like that. 
LCD the contrast obviously adjust the contrast of the display set format display format oh what's that one so we'll go into that so okay so time format 12 24 hours date format month date date month and temperature format degrees and celsius so we'll set that to 24 hour as i like so now you have to go back for it all again and press the right one Birthday reminder, you can set your birthday in there, it'll give you a happy birthday. It's going to be a long time before that happens. Ah, four months anyway. Brightness, backlight, speaks for itself. Set countdown, you can have a countdown timer on it. You have to go through this every time you want that. Time reminder function. That will basically be your hourly beep. You can set it so it comes on and off at a certain time so it doesn't disturb you at night. You can have it 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour or two hours. Holiday reminder close open. That's um, basically happy new year, happy birthday, happy Christmas, all that sort of thing. Sound wake up, so you can clap or make a noise to wake the display, so it should go dim and then wake up to noise and back to the start. So to get out of that, you literally oh shit! Now I've got to go through the whole year or the crap load of years to get out of this. And every now and again, it will tell you to have a good day. Sometimes it will tell you not to sit for too long. And as you can see, it's changed to Saturday now. So that's the settings. That's the clock. And there we are in the candlelight mode. Cracking little bit of kit. It's the second one I built because I knackered that switch up on the top. As you can see, it lies flat. And it, if you stand it up, it won't fit with the back on. I could have left the back off and just put it together. But the temper just destroyed it um yeah quite happy with this not bad for under a tenner nice little clock might get a couple more make them as presents for people now i've had a bit of practice so um yeah that's the candlelight clock most happy with it if you like the video leave a like it helps with uh algorithms and getting me noticed if you haven't already subscribe to the channel because i'll be doing all sorts of random stuff I will get round to the Arduino one day, when I've got nothing left to build. Um, actually in the middle of a... I don't know, the computer of a... There we go, I can't do too much, but yeah, I'm actually in the middle of building a light organ. And quick preview of the circuit board. That doesn't pick up the focus very well, does it? So yeah, there's the circuit board and that chip holder was absolutely mullered, as was the chip. But as you can see, I've uh, done a grand job of straightening all them pins out. That came and the pins were at 90 degrees, they were bent out, they were bent in, it was all over the place. So when you buy shit from Banggood, expect it to be shit, because it will be. These glasses won't replace them, they're knackered. These are my prescription ones. I use reading glasses most of the time. You might have seen me wearing them in other videos. Got a bit of a selection going. But these lenses, because they're glass, they're so much clearer and it makes soldering easier. So anyway, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one. Get in the shit!